Okay, so in this video clip, we're going to take a look at uh, Tidyverse, which is a suite of packages in R. And uh, we already had created uh, a number of videos relating to um, uh, using the ggplot2 package, um, which is this one, which is part of the family. And uh, we applied that to uh, the MPG uh, data set, which is a small data set. And we set it up here in the Google Colab, which means uh, all the codes that we had in the previous video clips here are incorporated in. So if we double click on this uh, Google Colab link, that will bring you into this uh, um, Although it's Python based, it allows us to use R uh, in the in this compiler, and uh, you can save it uh, to your own um, um, to your own. You can file save as or save a copy into your own drive, right? So this is one of the benefits. You can take this. Um, uh, notebook and put it into your own Google Drive, but you need to have a Google Drive uh, and you need, to, you need to be signed in to start off with. Okay, so I'll, I'll just run through. Uh, in order to be able to activate R, uh, we need to include uh, this uh, command. And okay, we will run I trust, right? This is my own, so I'll, I trust. And the code that I, I got here actually comes from um looks okay actually comes from uh this link here so we can follow the link and um the introduction here or r for data science is this uh we saw before r for data science is a textbook and it runs through uh different um visualizations and transformations uh, and so on modeling in the data okay so we're looking at the mp3 mpg data set uh, we need to make available the tidyverse uh, suite again you need double percentage and then r uh, we run and then we should get uh, all the packages so tibble tidy or reader ggplot deplier. Okay, so in, in this instance, we're going to rely heavily on this ggplot. The data that we have here, here relate to the manufacture of a car. There's not a lot of uh, cars. Here's just, I think, 224 or so. The manufacturer, the model, the engine size in terms of liters, the year, the cylinder, number of cylinders in the car. So four cylinders already quite big. Uh, by European standards, eight is, is very big. The transmission, so the type of uh, automatic gear, manual, and there's a few more options. Uh, is it front wheel drive, four wheel drive, uh, front wheel, rear, or four wheel drive? Uh, the fuel efficiency, miles per gallon uh, in the city, on the highway, the fuel type, different types of fuel, and then class of vehicle, so compact SUV, minivan. Okay, so uh, we might take a look then at what's in this MPG that is set is 234 by 11 um, columns. So 234 rows uh, and there's uh, an additional, we have out line here to first 10 and there are an additional 224 um I, i've put a little bit of um filtering and selecting code here what if we want to take this data set look at engine size uh, more than four liters and then from that select just these uh, columns so um the manufacturer model display sorry, uh, engine size and cylinder, right? And you can see here as we toggle down through uh, all the engine size terms of liter, bigger than four, 
um, 5.2, 4.7, so on, so nothing less than four. Um, get some description of the data. So we have this function, it's a deplier function. It gives us uh, an overview of what's in our uh, data and then a summary. Uh, and we have um, manufacturer, uh, model, engine size, uh, in terms of uh, liters, minimum 1.6, mean is 3.4, maximum 7, um, maximum lit uh, cylinders 8, minimum 4, no three cylinders in this range of cars, uh, the average is 5, the median is 6. Okay, um, now we were starting the graphing, we just run and we get uh, an overview of the mo miles per gallon on the highway and then the side liters uh, engine size, right? So obviously the bigger the engine, the more, the less fuel efficient it becomes, right? And uh, we can break this down by class. Uh, we have an unusual, um, these two seaters, which would appear small, uh, they tend to have big engine size, right? There's a range of them, but it's because they're small that we're getting higher fuel efficiency. Uh, and even though in terms of liters, the engine size is big, these cars still probably relatively efficient just because of their size. Um, again, the GG plot, um, syntax is we call up the data, uh, geometric uh, points on the x-axis and again we have the uh, engine size in terms of liters, the highway, mo the miles per gallon on the highway uh, and then we can use size but that might be better if we use class for instance, might be more revealing, this is a bit clunky uh, gives us something, it breaks it down by, by class, um, but prefer perhaps uh, if we were printing in a black and white publication, we would sh use shape somehow to denote that. Maybe that's not completely clear. Um, we can try other things, of course, and making everything blue could be of interest, but not uh, spectacular. Um, and uh, we could do a facet wrap where we say, okay, let's break apart all the data here and then break it down by class. So the class would be two-seater compact midsize. And again, we get that kind of sense that the higher the number of liters the, in, the, in the engine size, the lower the efficiency. We kind of can see that across the board, right? Uh, that can be enhanced by color. If we put in color, uh, before we didn't have a reference here to color uh, and I think it's it's fairly um, it becomes a lot clearer if we put in color so we have the two seaters again we have that information but aesthetically it's more appealing um, we could uh, break it down by the size of the uh, engine so four sorry number of cylinders four five six and eight Right, and then we have um, also on the X, uh, on the Y axis, uh, we have uh, miles per gallon, uh, efficiency on the highway. Um, and then we have also, we can break this apart for um, four wheel drive, front wheel drive and rear uh, wheel drive. Okay, so that's something that um, is, uh, could be helpful to clarify uh, the nature of what we're looking at. Um, it does create, so we, we have the, the syntax here is, we call up the data, uh, it's an X, Y, so on each, on the X axis, the horizontal axis, the engine size, and the Y axis, we have um, the miles per gallon, the highway, and then we're comparing in the facet drop, we're comparing uh, the drive, is a four wheel drive, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, 
uh, against the cyl cylinder size, right? Um, so that's something that's before we just had class, right? Um, again, we can run, um, we can include color to denote drive, right? Which we didn't have before, you can see here. Um, so we just enhance the, the syntax very slightly by including this reference and say, okay, perhaps color would be useful here. Um, and um, we can again uh, run, recreate what we had started with, with the GM points. Um, and maybe we can then run a pattern through this, right? Detect what the should appear, what the pattern is. So it's it, it would appear that those two seaters tend to corrupt a little bit the uh, the pattern here. But that's what we're getting if we were to put a geometric smoothing through the set of data that we have here. Uh, this is what we can produce. The band of error widens as we move over this side, but then the two-seater uh, class car tends to skew a bit what's going on, so we're getting greater variation. And then we can break that down um, if we run that. Right, we can break that down for the uh, drive. So the line type then is contingent on the drive. Um, and we have, again, um, varying. Okay, so they, uh, again, it's a uh, full uh, uh, line or uh, trend, and that's based on drive. Uh, before we had a line type, so it discriminated. Uh, for the different types of drive, whether it was four wheel, front wheel, or rear wheel. Um, and we can, if we want, add some color here, which we hadn't before. So we're putting color for drive. And there's just varying uh, degrees of nuances and so on that we can exploit. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do this, just run through and observe. So we are copied the bulk of what was there before in terms of um, the analysis offered here, but the code we set up in the Google Colab and you can play around, manipulate it uh, using the Google Colab. So that's something that perhaps uh, is a little bit more convenient to work with.